people have asked me and they still ask me from time to time, Johnny, are these people absolutely insane? And I would say, yes, yes, they are. They're, they're satanic and they're absolutely insane as well. Their consciences have been seared. And you see that here with people like this, this General Ben Hodges, okay? He gave a keynote interview on the Russia-Ukraine war and NATO involvement. And he's emphasizing that the next three weeks are extremely critical for the development of the war that, and that basically we need to break their backs, meaning the Russians. Now he proposes to do this, not by sending in ground troops per se, or boots on the ground. He just wants to get a whole bunch more lethal weaponry to the Ukrainians. And then he wants them to strike at Russia itself with long range artillery and drones and missiles. And that way you strike at the heart of Russia and you break their backs is what he's saying here. I mean, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to let you listen to it for yourself. You don't need to listen to me blather on. Let's just, you know, get it straight from the horse's mouth. As a matter of fact, hang on a second. Let's make sure I'm doing this right. Hang on a second, guys. All right. Looks like we've got everything lined up correctly. So let's go and listen to the general. What he has to say. Are brutal. They're evil, but they're not stupid. And so I think they will learn from this, and they will eventually uh, get back up on their feet if we let them, which is why NATO needs to smash them right now. We, we need to break their back. I don't mean by NATO troops going into Ukraine, but by accelerating the delivery of everything that Ukraine needs to smash these Russian formations that are trying to retreat to regroup, to get new troops, new equipment, new ammunition, and then go into the fight for the next phase in Donbass. Now is the time they're so vulnerable. That's where you crush them. So um, if we do that, then there won't be another offensive. All right, that's, that, but that has to come from uh, the idea that we want to win, that this is our fight. You know, what, what's so insane about this is that he knows full well that the Ukrainians are encircled by the Russians right now, that the Russians drew them in and drew them out to Kiev and drew them into Kharkov and so on. But there's still some battles going on, but for the most part, they wanted to hold them there so they can encircle what's left in the Donbass region, which they've done. They've got 60,000 uh, Ukrainian troops trapped right now. And it's surrender or die time. The last push has begun. And they just captured the uh, Porton Azov and so forth. So this general sitting here talking out the side of his face. Anyway, let's continue. Not just, just Ukraine's fight. We need to provide intel, intelligence, that helps identify all these targets, these retreating units. That... Which we've already been providing. That's why that uh, Ukrainians have been able to decimate some of these Russian columns. is because of NATO assistance, NATO intelligence and particularly their um, surveillance. So here we go. The depots, the fuel, the transportation hubs, we need to identify that and who's, who's moving to get in position for the next offensive. We can do this. I mean, the, the excellent intel that was done before the war started. So we know how to track where the units are. That's, that's number one, to help with targeting for Ukraine. Number two, give them the capability so how is that not committing an act of war against Russia? Somebody tell me. Somebody explain it to me. If you're providing key intel in order to kill off more Russians to their enemies, how is that not aiding and abetting their, their enemy? How are you not now an accomplice in this war? This is World War III, and these people just are so delusional, they don't seem to understand that boots on the ground don't matter. You're providing lethal weaponry, and Russia has just come out again and said, Look, knock it off. These are legitimate targets, and we're going to start hitting you if you don't knock it off. But the general wants to continue shipping it in. Here we go. That they've been begging for to, to strike what's causing all the damage. That means long-range artillery, long-range rockets, and drones that can go deep into Russia to hit these targets. All right, that's how we break the back. And then the third thing, of course, is uh, anti-ship capability that can, eat, that can strike Sevastopol. After three weeks, if, if we don't accelerate, give more to Ukraine, 
then I think Ukrainian uh, ammunition goes down. Uh, the Russians will have gotten back on their feet by that time. The Russians have never left their feet. And so this opportunity begins to look like that again. The momentum that Ukraine has. And they don't have any. He, like I said, he's talking out the side of his face or out of his you-know-what. So, <laughs> I mean, these people are delusional and they are crazy. There's no way to get more aid into Ukraine without driving it in, without flying it in. And if you're driving it in in convoys, those are legitimate targets. I don't care what you say. If you're stockpiling in Poland just across the border or Romania, what have you, those become legitimate targets. He knows this. And yet he sits there and spouts off out the side of his face anyway. I'm just so sick of these people. But this is what, you know, war looks like. Azov stronghold falls, Russians control Mariupol port. NATO group is now trapped. So the Russian army and Donetsk forces have entered and are now controlling the port of Mariupol, the uh, stronghold of Azov forces after Avastol. And here comes another thriller as there's information about a second group of trapped NATO officers. A second group now. So... The war in Mariupol is coming to an end. The Russians now control 98% of the city. As of, as of Stahl Mains remains, the fate of the industrial complex will be decided at a meeting of the commanders of the military formations that take part in the Mariupol operation. The possibility of the Russians completely destroying the industrial complex by launching uh, FAB 3000 bombs is open, although this is not their priority. They don't want to slaughter Ukrainian soldiers wholesale, guys, they've been trying to avoid that as much as possible. But look, these are the worst of the worst. And now there's a second group of trapped NATO officers there. I don't know what happened to the first group at this point. I haven't heard much more about it. I haven't kind of following it on uh, the Telegram account, which, by the way, is on the website now, YouTube and alternate channels, including Telegram. That tab is right here. And then the link is right up on top for the Telegram account t.me slash dnt spk short for don't speak anyway back to the story here so now the russians control the port at mariupol according to reports russian forces broke the uh, line of defense and entered the port from the side of this uh i'm not going to try and say the, of the, the name of the settlement but it was at this point that azov forces tried to escape the video was leaked by war news 24 7 with the Azovites running amidst the bombing. And I did see that video. And you can see that right here. So at the same time, another group of Ukrainians tried to escape but fell into an ambush of Russian tanks. So now the 5th Donetsk uh, Forces Brigade first occupied the strategic point where the port lighthouse is located, then entered and proceeded from the south, clearing Azov forces. So here's videos uh, from the port. And here's some more. Well, at least it doesn't look uh, decimated. It looks usable, maybe. So NATO officers in the port of Mariupol. The Russians now control three quarters of the port. Can, uh, control these areas, including the development points of Ukraine's naval border guard forces, allow the uh, Russians not only to advance deeper into the city along the west coast, but also to better control the airspace. The Russians report that from this direction, Ukrainian helicopters tried to enter Mariupol several days ago to evacuate Azov leaders and NATO military countries or their officers. So the uh, entry of enemy aircraft into Mariupol from the sea is almost impossible. And this creates an additional problem for the trapped NATO forces. Now the Russians claim that several NATO intelligence officers who have previously arrived in Mariupol under the guise of private military companies are now trapped in the southern port of Mariupol, both in the port and in Avastel. So there's two groups, apparently. It seems that they tried to escape and split into two or more groups. These forces are now trapped as the territories of Mariupol, which were previously controlled by Ukrainian border guards, now comes under the control of Russian forces. So there you go. They are trapped.
and apparently they split into different groups to try and escape. Now Ukrainian forces have surrendered, some of them anyway. The Russians claim there are now new deliveries of Ukrainian forces in Mariupol. According to Russian media, officers, sailors, and soldiers have already surrendered to the Russian army. The Russians uh, check their details and put them on a bus. Um, the representative of Donetsk, E. Basurin, announced that the big battle in the central port of Mariupol is over. Clashes continue in Avastol with the Russian artillery and the Air Force striking at Azovites on the territory of the industrial complex. So those battles continue. And they basically made a fortress out of these uh, factories. So I'll let you watch the videos on your own. And there you go. Just some more updates on the war, which I haven't done in a little while because everybody else is covering it. But I saw these two stories that I thought I should bring to your attention. Number one, this crazy general, and he basically represents everything NATO is doing right now, which is absolutely insane. Bringing a more lethal weaponry to Ukraine. How they're going to get it to him is, a, is anybody's guess. But just imagine, I thought about this earlier today, if they start launching this stuff, say, from Poland or Romania, then it's on. And I think they're crazy enough to do it. Because if you listen to what this general says, he says, well, we need to break their backs now. And they're of the opinion that as long as they don't have boots on the ground, which they do, I just showed that to you, down in Mariupol, they figure as long as they don't have a whole bunch of boots on the ground, I guess, that it's not really a war for them. That they can go ahead and provide all this lethal aid, and Russia shouldn't have a problem with that. I mean, it's just, yeah, these people are insane. Their consciences have been seared. And they're probably demonically possessed. I mean, there's no other explanation for it. Because Russia, not only is Mariupol uh, fallen, but Russia is surrounding and basically has surrounded and cut off 60,000 of the Ukrainian army in the Donbass region. They've been begging them to surrender, but it doesn't look like, like they're going to, as I showed you yesterday. They said the only option is victory. So they're going to fight to the death, apparently. But thankfully, some of them are able to surrender and live to fight another day for a much different cause, not for this, uh, these crooked governments, especially the Ukrainian side. It's all about the NWO. Their own parliament talks about the new world order and how they are part of it. They have the new digital ID system already rolling out with universal basic income and everything in Ukraine right now, but nobody's talking about it. Now we are, and we did last week. You'll have to look at it on the channel and on the website. So that's all I got for now. I know I'm kind of rambling here now, but there's a lot to ramble about. There's so much to cover. I could keep going all night, really, but I'd lose my voice, which I'm already starting to do. So I've had a lot of wind here lately, a lot of crap in the air because of that. And thanks to my COPD, it's just, you know, really kind of an irritating time right now. Anyway, we'll get through it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So there you go. Don't forget about don'tspeaknews.com. Like I said, this is home base for everything that we do. This is where I'm putting all the content now because we can't put much on YouTube anymore. If you say anything um, that isn't pro-Ukraine in regards to this war, they're going to give you a strike. So I'm going to have to put this content on the website as well. And I will put some more stuff on BitChute. I'll put these videos. I'll kind of, you know, simulcast them there. And then, of course, I'm also putting things on the podcast, the audio-only podcast, which you may not know about. I don't talk about it a lot, but there's the tab right here, the podcast on Spotify and Anchor and more. Anywhere that you can listen to a podcast, we're basically there. So if you click this link here, it brings you over to anchor.fm. And that's where I upload these audio only podcasts, you know, the audio only version of, the, of this show. And there you can find it. All of them are right here. Now, I don't put every single one up here because some of them don't make sense, you know, especially if there's something I'm trying to show you on maps and so forth. But I put most of the audio only version of the shows right here. And here's where you can listen. Google, Overcast, 
Pocket Cast, Radio Public, or Spotify, Stitcher, Copy RSS, Apple Podcasts, and Google as well. So all here at that link. That's right under that tab on the website. Podcast on Spotify and Anchor, don't speak news.com. All right, all kinds of places you can find us, guys. So doing the best that I can. I'm just a one man ship. So bear with me. And I'll keep my eyes on this as much as possible. God bless. Take care. Chinese Storm, don't speak.